Hello, hello and welcome back to Bernama Today. You're joining me, Elena Abla, in the studio. I am speaking to Farida Hamid. We have a very crucial and important topic to talk about because, you know, there's something that I think uh, we are all uh, sort of like in the moment with. So we're talking about the New Zealand terror attacks, which of course caused a lot of uh, uh, issues. And um, But out of that, that, that tragedy, uh, Jacinda Ardern came to the fore. And we're talking about Jacinda Ardern's game-changing language of leadership. Now let's talk about this. Of course, nobody expected with this this the darkest of hours that you know you will you will find something to mm. see out of this this shining beacon yes. <laughs> to to as a role model of sorts. Yeah. Now, um, uh, just Jacinda Ardern, who is also the world's youngest female prime minister, this being the month of March, we're celebrating yes, Women's, women's uh, Day women's. Week month, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and she's the New Zealand prime minister who you uh, will manage to unite her nation in the aftermath. Um, tell us about how she's currently sort of like not post a child yeah, yeah for yeah. a lot yeah. uh, not just for women for political leadership for leader yeah. for just how you would react in a situation after a tragedy yeah i think you're very right i mean there's a lot of stuff that's been written about how she handled the yeah. aftermath of the of the new zealand shootings and i think a quote that she said when when she was asked about this on hindsight, she said, I, I, didn't, I don't think I'm displaying leadership. What I think I'm displaying is humanity. And I think that gets to the heart of it because the reality is in moments of crisis like this, it is the compassion and the humanity that people see because we are visual beings, right? Yeah. So before you say anything as well, it is the compassion. And she did that extremely well because you could see the sorrow in her face. Now, what is important about the compassion is that her compassion was that we're in, all, we're in this together. Yeah. And in a world in which we are politicians in particular are so uh, committed to showing the otherness of people, mm -hmm. like this person is different from me, I think what she what she showed was that, you know what, I'm a leader too, but I'm I'm just as traumatized, I'm just as hurt by what has happened. And so in, in the face of that grief, what she did was as the leader, she role modeled the compassion that that later we saw how even the citizens and the other Kiwis, how they reacted to to this aftermath, even though they were non Muslims. And yeah. she did not just affect her own people, she affected the world. The world, exactly. With that. I mean, as I was watching the, the, the aftermath and uh, reading, uh, I, I was affected myself. Mm. I, I, I felt pulled, I, yeah. I felt gravitated to Words, you know yeah. that it feels real it yeah. feels that you know this is how it should be yeah. it this is how we should not be um, separated disconnected yes. this is how connected feels like. that's you're absolutely right that's why she resonated with all of us because she's coming from an authentic place yeah. you can't fake this yeah yeah you, you we've, we've heard leaders who try and fake it like yes. they're empathetic and it just doesn't work because it's a it's a very human thing we can feel when someone feels the way yeah. we feel in moments of crisis and this is a representation of why the words that she has uh, well said shared all seems to all sound right because they were from the right place yes. it was not crafted it was not scripted yes. it was not a speech written by someone else for her yes. which uh, completely everyone could see yes. um, and I it's think very thoughtful and meaningful I mean it was carefully chosen words um, and we'll talk a little bit about that, but I absolutely agree with you. I mean, she was very articulate. She was very eloquent. It's not about saying so many things, but saying the right things. Yep. Yeah, the right things that you know that any human being who's who's got their head screwed on right can resonate with that. So how do we reach that point where our heads are still screwed on right when we are in positions where uh, a lot of us, when we see the people who supposedly represent us, don't seem to represent us, don't resonate, are not relevant, and we yeah. feel disconnected. Yeah. Where is the humanity that has been lost as a representative of the human <laughs> beings that you are representing? Yeah. I, I, that's a really good question, and I wish I had a simple answer for that. Uh, the reality is that the, all the data seems to show that people all over the world don't trust politicians. In fact, <laughs> yes. the trust is that it, it's very low. Correct. And I think that tells you a lot because, for example, in the US, you see whenever there's a gun shooting, everybody will say thoughts and prayers, mm. thoughts and prayers. And those words are meaningless. It doesn't mean anything to, a, to anyone anymore. Yeah. So I think, and even you know, in, in this part of the world, I think people say a lot of things when there's moments of crisis, but it's not followed up with action. Mm. And so I think we can learn a lot from Jacinda in, in the way that she handled it in a very authentic manner and that is what is missing I think that is what people you see that's why she's become this global icon because 
everybody can can relate at a very human at a very primal level yeah. what was going on and how they feel correct yeah. now share with us some specific examples mm. and explain why it has touched the courts of people everywhere yeah I, I think for me the communication aspect because I watched that very closely when she was communicating and, and I think the key thing was that the first thing I noticed was that she communicated very quickly mm -hmm. and she was uh, very clear mm -hmm. um, she you know in moments of crisis a lot of questions people are traumatized right so they're asking who what when how did this happen why did this happen yep. and the role of a leader actually is to calm that fear and to give people information right. because that's what people are hungry for if you if you do case studies of every crisis that has ever happened people want information yes so that was the first thing um, I think it was very important that she actually called the terror uh, called it a terrorist attack mm -hmm. when the attacker was a white person. Right. That is not common. Usually terrorist is thrown around only when it's a Muslim or someone of color. Right. right. Um, the other thing was the three key things that she also said. Um, she refused to name the yeah. the shooter. That was very key for me that as well. That was key. Yeah. yeah. Um, she said speak the names of those who were lost rather yeah. than the name of the man who took them. Yeah. And then she said, they are, they are us, yeah. um, the people who were shot, as well as the families. And I, to me, that was really important, again, because the conversation everywhere in the world today is about showing how different somebody else is from us. That's what politicians peddle in the fear and yeah. the hate and the division. And the final one was when she said, you may have chosen us, yeah. but we utterly reject and condemn you. Yeah. And these were, very, um, these were very courageous and very strong words, very decisive words. And what she said, I think, was um, was a signal to the rest of the community, her, her people, that this is how we're going to handle it. Mm. Because remember, the, the role of a leader is to set the tone. Mm. And she set the tone yep. very well with that kind of language. Yep. And it, it helped set the tone with all the conversations that was happening around the world, mm. not just at, at her shores in New Zealand. Yes. Because you said it right uh, when she said that you, I, we don't speak the name, we speak the name of the ones that were lost. Mm. It, it, it turned things on its head. Yes. The focus became became the priority of the people who were lost and not giving a voice to the person who sought that attention yes. and using the same as versus the difference yes. and uh, now our conversations around the world whether it's media or it's whether it's politicians whether it's people who are talking about the attack also has changed because of her lead in terms of the yes. the, the message that she has shared yes. now uh, not forgetting the people in New Zealand who rose to the occasion mm. to support the community that is of course a display it was of very heartwarming it was it? very heartwarming yeah. I think one of the things that really struck me was the biker gangs yes. You know, they actually said they were going to stand outside the mosque and protect. And yeah. protect. And I thought th that really touched me because you know how we all have biases about yes. what biker gangs look like. Yes. Um, and then also there was a crowdfunding of millions of do dollars to donate halal food. Yeah. Um, and I think what we saw again was that you, you know, you don't have to have be of a certain religion to care about somebody else when they are going through a difficulty because there are universal values that all our cultures and all our faiths teach us and I think the people of New Zealand I think in, in such a dramatic way showed the world where we could all do better when it comes to something like this because this united the nation and I hope I seriously hope this is my wish that if ever something like this ever happens in our country or in any other country that we take a leaf out of their notebook and all come together and support each other it doesn't matter if it's a it's a church that's attacked or a Hindu temple that's attacked or a mosque that's attacked that's attacked we must show that we are one and that we our, our values that we believe in our race or our religion translate into that humanity to others as well. I am still affected talking about it, about how, you know, the compassion that came forth, about how people, uh, they always say, you know, in times of crisis, you know, people come to the fore yes. and then you see the true colours and this is really the true colours that yes. we love to see uh, the rest of the world, yes. not just in New Zealand, let them be the shining example for yes. us to learn from. Now, what can we as Malaysians and our political leaders, how can uh, we take the lessons and how can we implement this and how can we learn from this? Yeah, I think just you and me having this conversation, it's really clear that we're all sick and tired of all this divisive rhetoric. Um, and I think we're still seeing quite a bit of that going on in our country. Mm -hmm. And I would caution politicians to not be so flippant mm -hmm. with the language and the words that they're using to stir up hatred and divisiveness because you may think it's flippant and you may think it serves your short-term goals. But don't forget, there's a lot of crazy people out there who take what you say literally, yes. right? And so it's not funny. 
Uh, it's not anything to joke about. It's not anything to think that I'm going to score immediate political points. I think if you have decided you're going to be a politician, that you serve certain interests, I think be very, very careful about the language that you use because you don't know who's listening there. And if, God forbid, something like that happens because of something you said, it's going to be a, a big price to pay. I think the key word that you've used in that whole answer that you shared with me was serve and in service, which I find lacking uh, yeah. in a lot of those who are supposed to be in service yeah. of the nation. Yeah. When you're taking a role as such, as a yeah. political leader, yeah. people usually use it for the abuse of that position, yeah. for power, yes. for fame, for yes. uh, gains yes. elsewhere. Yes. So uh, the mindset shift, what, what, is, what is the... Are we expecting not enough? as uh, people that we allow this space to happen, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it takes two. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so if I talk from our perspective as the people, mm -hmm. um, I've always said we have to hold them to a higher standard because yeah. if we keep quiet and we don't caution or we don't uh, um, say this is not acceptable, then we are also to blame for what it's is, like silence what is, is going consent. On. Yeah, yeah, silence is consent. Yeah. But I also think that leave the leaders aside. I think you and I in our everyday interactions with people, I think we have to call out when people say things yeah. that are offensive, that pe when people say things that are disruptive, then people say things that are hurtful, that are slurs, that are biases across a whole range of subjects, don't be afraid to stand up for what is right because people are sick and tired of, of all this fluff. You know, there's so much of fluff going around. I think we have to call them out. And I, But from a leader's perspective, I think we really have to see the kind of leaders who say what needs to be said, even though it may be at that moment, may be unpopular. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you have to come from a place as what is in the best interest of the country, what is in the best interest of all the people that I serve. Everybody is different. You have people not just from racial, religious, gender differences. You have mindset differences. You have biases. You have wealth gaps. So you must, if you are going to be a leader, you must come at it from perspective is what is in the best interest of everyone that I serve. You can't make everybody happy. Yes, correct. But but don't get caught up in the political speak, which is where a lot of politicians get caught. You know, they don't answer your questions. They meander, you know, they give you a different answer to the question that you ask. And so I think we're all hungry for someone to just speak straight. Mm -hmm. And even if we don't agree, at least we can accept that that person is speaking from their own truth and their own sense of values. And I think there is respect for that. You may not agree with their point of view, but you respect the fact that they stand up for what they believe in. And then ultimately, in their mind, they're doing what is in the best interest of everybody that they serve. Be bold and go forth. <laughs> now back to Jacinda, as mm -hmm. she as a role model, uh, she has created a path for, uh, I think, uh, that you know the, the women uh, country leader yes. is probably uh, a, a good place for us to look towards you know I think a lot of people say oh it may not be necessary so what what do you think she set the tone for yeah I think it's really interesting that she is the world's youngest PM yeah. and I think a lot of people compared her to Trump <laughs> which was really interesting <laughs> right because the way two very different yes. styles two very different communication styles yes. as well um, and I think we need I think what she has done is she's made at least for me I can only speak for myself um, it's made me realize that I, I too need to step up. We all need to step up and right. we have to speak what we believe in, yeah. even if other people are not going to like it. But what I really, for me, what I really took away from all of this is that um, the fact that we must speak towards uh, transparency, trust and the universal human values because that is something that everybody believes in mm -hmm. all good people of this world believe in those things so let's put aside all this you know this um what, what are, you know you call it like all this bluster um that politicians like to use and i think particularly because she's a woman i think she's showing a side of leadership that compassion is strength yeah. compassion is not weakness yeah. compassion is actually strength yeah. Um, and that whether you're male or female, it is something that you can relate to. Um, and I would take it a step further. I would say this is this is translates even in the work environment. For example, when people are being uh, let go, like DSSs and things like that, people are traumatized. They're going through a difficult time. Remember what I said at the beginning, that what she did was she shared the information mm -hmm. so that she could calm people's fears. And so what I hear from a lot of people is when they're told about the VSSs, for example, there's so little information coming yeah out and 
you know, this is not about leader. It's not just about leadership. It's common sense as well. Yeah. So I think if you could marry what Jacinda did, it's common sense. Yeah. How we treat others as we want to be treated. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that to me has always been the golden rule. Thank you so much, Farida, for that you know uh, incisive interview, and for Jacinda for being that role model and uh, for helping us keeping it real. Yeah, <laughs> That's all the time that we have uh, on Brahma today. Thanks for staying with us to the end of the show. Bye for now. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.